Welcome to ECE302. This is Lecture A6 on Power Spectral Densities. I'm Professor Stanley Chen. So today we are going to look at a follow-up discussion of wire sand stationary processes. In particular, we're going to look at the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function Rx of tau. So to start with, let me remind you what are white sense stationary random processes. We say that a random process X of T is a white sense stationary process if the following two criteria are satisfied. The first criteria is that the mean function is a constant. The second criteria is that the autocorrelation function, which is a two-dimensional function in T1 and T2, can be written as uh, the function of t1 minus t2 or in other words we just care about the difference between the two timestamps instead of the absolute starting point or the end point of the random process um, so in this lecture we're going to look at uh, this wise and stationary process we're going to focus on wise and stationary processes um, if you have a wise and stationary process then your autocorrelation function, which is Rx of t1 and t2, uh, since you can write it as Rx of t1 minus t2, there is really no need to keep indexing this in t1 and t2. Uh, and this is the same as Rx of, of tau. All right, and therefore uh, we can, from this point onward, we just need to look at this function uh, Rx of tau. Uh, bear in mind that this tau stands for uh, any starting point T1 and any end point T2 when you take the difference. So this is a 1D uh, function uh, in, in tau. Okay, uh, This 1D function, if you try to recall from this diagram, this is the uh, topless uh, matrix diagram, uh, you, since you are only tracing uh, yourself along this line, uh, you are essentially just um, uh, all the function values on this line are the same. All you need to do is just to look at one cross section. Okay, uh, this one one cross section is a one dimensional function um, because anything on okay because anything you're looking at here that can be inferred from this green line by shifting. And the green line appropriately to the, to the correct position and therefore there's really no need to know uh, the yellow and also the green and also this two-dimensional function by knowing just the green line alone this horizontal line you will know the entire uh, autocorrelation function uh, which is the rx of t1 and t2 uh, so this thing is what we call rx of, of tau okay which is this horizontal function and we will look at this horizontal uh, horizontal function only so I want to define a new concept in today's lecture. The concept is known as the power. How do we define the power of a random process? So what is power? Well, if I have a random process x of t, I can take the magnitude square. I can integrate from minus t to t. I can divide it by 2t. This is my power. That is a very uh, electrical engineering definition of power. Uh, we understand this and we're happy with this definition. But remember that since this is a random process, and then if you are taking the uh, integration over time, you are still not taking care of the statistical randomness. And therefore, this Px of hat, this is a random quantity. It is actually a random number because you have already taken over care of the all the t's there's no more t involved in this calculation uh, so px of hat is a random number uh, but it is a random uh, number uh, since uh, you have randomness in your x uh, and so what you can do is that you can if you, you do, if you don't want to deal with the randomness you can take the expectation of this um, px of hat uh, in that case, you will obtain the average uh, of power uh, of this random process. So here is the definition. I can define the average power, uh, which is defined as Px. It is the expectation 
expectation over all the possible random indexes, uh, which where the index of course has to go with this x. Uh, here I also deal with uh, this limit where t goes to infinity because I'm not just interested in one particular period. I'm interested in the entire uh, function and so I want to calculate the average and therefore I take the limit with t goes to infinity and I define this as the power of the entire random process. So this is the definition of the power of a random process. And knowing this power can be useful because this is a summary statistics of a random function. Right? So if you think about a mean function, well the mean function is due a function of time t, even though if you have a y sand station, your process doesn't change over time, right? you also need to take care of the autocorrelation function that still depends on time. You want one number to describe the random process, then power will seem to be a very natural choice. So this is the definition of a power for a random process. So what is the power spectral density? Uh, what, is, what is this meaning? The power spectral density, or PSD, of a Y-sense stationary process is defined as the following quantity. Okay, it's defined as Sx of omega. On the right-hand side of this definition, you have a limit, you have expectation, you have something with a tilde, you have 2t. Okay, so that looks very complicated. Let me go through it one by one. Uh, the thing that is inside of this uh, square is defined as the this function here. Okay, so this is xt of tilde. This is a function of omega. Omega is the frequency. So you have this x of t, and then you have this e minus j omega t dt from minus t to t. This is the Fourier transform of the random process x of t. Now, the interesting thing of this uh, Fourier transform is that the Fourier transform, the original definition is that you need to go from minus infinity to infinity. And in here, the integration limit is from minus t to t. And therefore, it is the Fourier transform of x limited to minus time t and t. So let's say you have a random process. This is your random process. Um, you're looking at uh, this random process from minus t to t, minus t to t. You're only looking at this portion of the function, and you take the Fourier transform. That defines this x t tilde. And then you take the expectation of this um, quantity, right? So you take the expectation, and because this is a random process, even though if you take the Fourier transform, it will still be random, but now it will be random in the frequency domain. Uh, you divide by one over 2t, so you calculate the average uh, power. And then you set t goes to infinity, so that means you, you set this t to be as wide as possible. Okay, so this is, this is, this is what we turn to something. And then this is called the power spectral density. Now, why is it called the power spectral density? Uh, first of all, you need to integrate. If you integrate this thing as x of omega, d omega, you are going to obtain the power because this is a function in terms of the omega. For all, every omega you choose, uh, you will be able to obtain the density of the power. And so if you integrate this f uh, x of x, uh, s of x, then you will be able to obtain the power. The, the quantity here, this is almost the same as what we have defined in, in this term here. This is the power that we care about, which is the x of square. You integrate from minus t to t, and then you divide by 1 or 2t, and then you have this limit. What this thing says, is that I am going to take this limit inside, uh, take, take this limit outside, and I'm going to take this expectation inside, and then I'm going to pull this uh, integration and, and division outside. So let's see. So if you put this thing outside, and then you put this thing inside, uh, then what do you have? Then you have something extremely similar to this form, and this is calculated in the frequency domain instead of 
calculated in the time domain. And because of the possible theorem, which says that the energy is conserved, uh, as you go to the Fourier domain, go back to the time domain, uh, this is the energy conservation uh, principle. So you can you can obtain the same power by following this definition, which is the definition over the time axis, or you can go to the spectral domain and then calculate the power over there. Okay, and so that will give you something what we call the power spectral density, just like the uh, the probability density function. You need to integrate this density function in order to get the power. So this is what we call the PSD. It is the uh, per unit uh, power uh, for this uh, random process. And so ultimately what you are getting out from this power spectral density is this number, which is called the power. Now, of course, this definition is extremely abstract, and, and people have never been using this definition from scratch. Uh, the reason is that uh, there is a very useful theorem here. Okay, The theorem is attributed to Einstein, Wiener, and King Chin. Uh, what they showed is the following. This extremely complicated quantity called the power spectral density uh, it has a property that if you integrate this s x of omega d omega uh, then you will get the power okay you will get the power over a narrow band uh, of frequencies or if you integrate over the entire uh, frequency bands you will get the power of the entire signal and therefore, you, this is called the power spectral density. This power spectral density uh, uh, can be computed uh, through the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. Okay, so what does it mean? On the left hand side, you have this extremely complicated quantity called the power spectral density. It is something very, very useful that when you integrate, you will be able to get the power. This is something useful and you want to get. However, it is very difficult to compute. On the right hand side of this formula, you have this very simple definition. It is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. Now, x of tau, you take the e minus j omega tau, uh, you integrate over all the possible tau's, you get the Fourier transform. And this is defined as the um, uh, power spectral density. So the benefit of this theorem is that you do not need to calculate this Fourier transform magnitude square expectation 2t and the limit of t goes to infinity. Uh, the power spectral density according to this einstein wiener kinchin theorem it is exactly just the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. And so if I tell you the autocorrelation function you can find this power spectral density almost immediately. So for the remaining of, of our lecture uh, and this course, we're going to take this as the definition of the power spectral density, which is that the power spectral density will sort of define it as the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. So let us look at a few examples. Here is the first example. You have this r x of tau uh, equals to two uh, e minus two alpha tau with the absolute value. We want to find uh, s x of omega. This is the power spectral density of the autocorrelation function. So what is it? Well, you go to the Fourier table, uh, which will be provided to you during the exam, uh, which you can also find in our course website. Uh, you take the Fourier transform of this uh, function, you can see that it is going to be given by this 4 alpha divided by 4 alpha square plus omega square. So this is the autocorrelation function, this is the power spectral density. Uh, you can integrate this power spectral density from a certain band to calculate the power inside this frequency band. Here is another example. This is the random phase problem. Uh, we have calculated the autocorrelation function as, as this. The Rx of tau can be written as a squared divided by 2 times cosine omega 0 of, of tau. 
uh, we want to take the Fourier transform and since this is a cosine uh, function I can write it as uh, using the Euler formula I can write it as e j omega 0 tau plus e minus j omega 0 tau divided by 2 and each e j omega 0 e minus j omega 0 uh, they are just the delta functions so I carry on the Fourier transform of those I can show that this um, uh, this cosine uh, autocorrelation function uh, is equivalent to a power spectral density of two delta functions. And here's a diagram where you have this autocorrelation function here, and then this is your uh, power spectral density. Uh, this is the third example. You have the power spectral density given by this function. Uh, it is a, a rectangular function with a bandwidth from minus 5 to 5. This is what we call a band limited white noise. Uh, you have this n not defining the power. Uh, then you want to show uh, what is the autocorrelation function. So you take the inverse Fourier transform of this box function. You get the sink function. Uh, you have all these constants that comes out from the Fourier transform table. And so that would be the autocorrelation function uh, uh, for this uh, box uh, function. Now you can imagine that as as this function. Uh, it gets uh, narrower and narrower, meaning that let's say uh, I'm going to go to this limit. What will happen to this uh, box? What well, happens to the box will become much, much, much wider. Okay, that is uh, the uncertainty principle where you are absolutely certain in your time, you will become uncertain in your frequency. Um, so. So this is the Fourier transform. If you are Fourier transforming a delta function, you will get a flat in the in the frequency spectrum. Uh, this is what we call the white noise because it covers all the um, band frequency bands of the signal. Uh, this is going to be very useful. Uh, why? Because uh, generating white noise is extremely easy. I just generate uh, a, a random process with RID samples at all time instants. That is extremely easy to generate. Then I can get a white noise. Okay, I will get this power spectral density. I can send this white noise through any filter that I want. Uh, the filter will have a filter frequency response that I want. Then I can change this white noise to any colored random signal uh, so that I can process it. Uh, so that would be very useful uh, as you are dealing with uh, speech signal processing. Uh, or when you're dealing with communication systems. So why do you want to study power spectral density? Uh, it is very useful when we pass a random process through some linear operations. For example, convolution, running average, or running differences. Okay. Uh, the Fourier transform is very useful to speed up the computation and help uh, drawing the samples. So one question that students often ask is uh, why does power spectral density require the Weissen stationarity? Uh, this is a very important question because we are now assuming that everything is Weissen stationary. But in the beginning, why do we need Weissen stationary to define this power spectral density? The, the reason is that you're looking at this Rx of tau. Uh, this is a one-dimensional function. This one-dimensional function is compressed from a two-dimensional function because you're looking at this, this um, very beautiful um, uh, diagonal matrix where you say that I just need to look at one row uh, instead of looking at all the rows because any row would be a shift version of my, my, my green. Okay? Uh, this is true only when you have Weissen stationary process. If you try to draw this uh, matrix here, uh, you can see that this, this autocorrelation function for, let's say, a discrete function, you will have this shape. You have this Rx of 0 along the diagonal, and then you have this uh, topless structure, which is exactly what, we, what I'm drawing you here. Um, this uh, really requires the uh, Weissen stationary process because uh, the, the this equality holds, okay, uh, only when, when this R x of m and n equals to rx of m minus n, uh, this is true for my sensitivity processes only. Because you have this, 
uh, you can talk about the power spectral density. Uh, and reason is the following thing called the eigen decomposition. Uh, if you have a, um, a toplets matrix, uh, like the one that I'm showing you here, you can take the Fourier transform, you can diagonalize this, um, you can diagonalize this matrix. Uh, versus if you're taking this pattern here, you just cannot take the Fourier transform and diagonalize. This is a little bit advanced uh, technique called the eigen decomposition. Uh, and I, I call it optional, but if you know what eigen decomposition means, uh, you will appreciate this understanding. Because if you do not have this toplet structure, you just cannot take the Fourier transform and hope to diagonalize um, this matrix. If you are a topless matrix, if you take the Fourier transform, the Fourier transform would be the eigen uh, vector matrix. And so if you apply it to this data, uh, you will have this diagonal matrix that comes out. That is the Fourier transform. Okay, uh, and so uh, having wise and stationary, uh, and this assumption is necessary uh, for your Fourier transform to work. Uh, if you do not have this uh, one sense stationarity, uh, one you cannot you cannot uh, write this R X of uh, T one and T two as uh, R X of uh, a tau. You cannot write it in this way, and therefore you will stuck with this two dimensional function. And if you are stuck with the two dimensional function, you just cannot take the Fourier transform. All right. So to summarize what we have learned in this lecture are two extremely important concepts. One is what is the definition of the of a, a power spectral density for y sand stationary processes. And the thing that I hope you can remember is that the power spectral density is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function defined by this wiener kinchin theorem. It's this one. And then the second message I want you to remember is why do we need uh, to study the power spectral density? This is because we need to send this um, a random process through different linear operations, uh, including different types of convolutions. And in this case, uh, having the power spectral density, which is the Fourier transform, will allow us to do a lot more computations. Then someone may ask, why do you need YSN stationary, uh, stationary processes to define this uh, power spectral density? That is because uh, if the process is YSN stationary, then your autocorrelation function will become a topless matrix. And only topless matrices can be factorized by the Fourier transform matrices. And therefore, the Fourier transform will only work when you have uh, those YSN stationary processes. Okay, uh, so uh, the exercises that we are going to do for uh, this lecture will be a lot of uh, Fourier transforms, which you should have done in any signals and systems course. Uh, the more difficult concepts here would be the definition of this power spectral density, uh, as well as the implication of the power spectral density, rather than uh, the actual calculation of the power spectral densities. Uh, so I hope you can try our homework exercise and if you have any question, uh, please uh, feel free to post your question on Piazza. I will be very happy to answer those. Thank you very much.